Well, I'm on the farm here today and uh, going to do a little maintenance on the John Deere 5055D. And what I got on my plate today is I want to change the hydraulic filter and the hydraulic oil. The manual says the manual says to change the uh, uh, hydraulic filter. I believe after a hundred hours, which I did when I bought the tractor new. And then it says the next service is change the hydraulic fluid and filter at 1,200 hours. Well, I'm not at 1,200 hours. I'm at, it's like 942 hours. But uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to go ahead and change it because uh, one of the downsides of this tractor is that <clears throat> when you put this brake on, there's no light in the dash. And every now and then, uh, you'll just start driving with the parking brake on. And that brake is bathed in, in the same oil. And so, uh, you know, we've kind of learned quickly not to do that. And, uh, in fact, a lot of times we don't even set the parking brake just to be careful about it. But uh, I just felt like uh, we're getting ready to get into haying season. And, uh, you know... Changing filters and hydraulic oil is cheaper than uh, rebuilding a transmission. So I just want to be proactive about it. And this video, I'm going to kind of show uh, how you change the uh, hydraulic oil and filter on a 5055D John Deere tractor. According to the manual, the first thing you do is to lower the rock shaft all the way down. And that will get rid of any trapped oil that's in the system and uh, so let me get my buckets so I got my buckets here and uh, this uh, tractor holds approximately 10 gallons of hydraulic fluid and I got three three five gallon buckets here and uh, you can go to John Deere's website, and I've got my little tablet here, and uh, you can go online, and while I have a hard copy of the manual, uh, you can go online and look at the, at the manual for this tractor, and uh, this is just a little more handy for me than uh, uh, flopping around with a, you know, a magazine. You can actually print out uh, these pages. I think they let you print out a few of them at a time. I don't think they'll let you print the whole manual at once, but... Uh, uh, it'll kind of be my guide as I go along here. I wanted to say uh, one of the good things about this brake is it's, uh, you know, it's all mechanical. And uh, some of these tractors, whether the John Deere or some of these others, uh, Park is basically uh, putting it into a, uh, for lack of a better word, a gear where it goes down between uh, some teeth in the gearbox. And that's uh, mighty fine if you're on flat land. But with the hills we got, uh, sometimes when you get on a hill with some of these tractors that have that kind of a park brake, getting it out of park can be a real bear because the tractor rolls back against it. And you don't have that with this one. And I, I especially like that. So I got my, I've got my buckets positioned. And right there's the drain plug. Maybe you can see that. Uh, for the transmission and I uh, got some wrenches here I'm sure that's metric and I'll crack that open all right so I got this drain plug uh, cracked open and I uh, didn't have the right size wrench with me uh, I used a one and a quarter uh, socket and it's just a little bit loose on there so it's definitely a metric size maybe maybe it's not but uh, I'm down here on the ground and uh, one of the things, one of the ways to know uh, if you're getting old is when you get down on the ground to do something, uh, you ask yourself, is there anything else I can do while I'm down here? So this uh, size socket worked to break it loose. When I get up, I'll go find the socket that fits it if I got one. Otherwise, I'll use a, a crescent wrench. All right, let me take this thing loose. 
I don't know how fast this fluid's going to flow out of here, but we're going to find out. Uh, be interesting to see how clear it is too. Here it goes. Now what I got to do is I kind of got to act fast and move these buckets uh, when it gets close to full. So let me uh, come back. While the last of the oil is draining out of the transmission, uh, I got the filler plug and uh, I'm going to kind of wipe it off here and see if I see any uh, I believe it's magnetic you know, it's definitely a magnet on there but uh, let me wipe that off and see what I get so first of all I got it wiped off and it is definitely magnetic and that Carter key is just something I had laying around and I wiped this, just a little tiny bit of crud on top of it, and I wiped it off. And, you know, I can feel, like there's just a little sliver of something there, about as thick as a piece of hair. Just little something like that, but nothing, uh, you know, it's not like uh, big chips. Are coming out it's essentially nothing and uh, and it could be uh, you know just filings from when I when the when the tractor was bought uh, you know when it was first uh, purchased and when I say filings I'm talking about you know you know if I can find three or four of these little hair sized pieces so I think it's uh, pretty good But it is good to know that the drain plug has a magnet on the end of it. So one thing to be mindful of, I'm going to push this uh, bucket out of the way. Um, and I didn't notice it when I took the plug loose. But there is like a little washer gasket up in there. And uh, compression... I guess it's a compression uh, fitting that uh, this thing fits up in. So, don't want that going down in the bucket. Now, let me get this thing threaded on. I apologize for the odd angles. And I'll get a wrench and tighten that up. I got it tightened up and I used a crescent wrench. I did not have a socket uh, the right size to fit it. It is, I'm like sure it's a metric. Everything on this tractor is metric. So uh, I got that closed up. Next thing I'm going to do is take the filter off. I will not be laying underneath of it when I do that. So before I before I take this filter off, you know, cleanliness is everything with hydraulics. And uh, I just took a paper towel and uh, wiped that surface all the way around real good. Hopefully, I won't get any grit uh, down in there when I take it loose. And I've got a filter uh, wrench that uh, looks like this. And uh, let's just see if I can get it up on there and give it a turn. I've got a bucket down there to catch the oil. So let me continue with this and I'll come back. So I got the filter off and I'm letting it drain into that bucket. And one thing you got to be mindful of on these filters is there is an O-ring. Uh, so you want to be sure and get that back in place. Uh, so right here's the new filter <coughs> and it came with an o-ring and uh, I'm just gonna reach over there dab a little oil 
onto everything and uh, I just like to do that with the uh, engine filters and uh, I guess hydraulic filters too so let me screw that thing back on all right I hope I got it on there okay it says on the filter uh, to put oil on the on the o-ring basically and uh, snug it down and then turn it one and a quarter turns I'm not sure I turned it one and a quarter but it's on there tight without uh, you know King Kong and the thing uh, a little concerned about you know it's one thing for a uh, a gasket to mash it down flat but an o-ring you know they can gall up and ball up but uh, we'll see if there's any leaks when I start this thing up after I fill it up with uh, transmission fluid so according to the manual once you get uh, the hydraulic fluid drained and uh, I guess the filter in place I don't think it matters just the most important thing is that it's empty is there's a little cap right here and two screws in it and behind that cap or integral to it is a, uh, a filter screen so I want to take that loose and uh, see what I got there all right so I took a wrench and uh, I broke these uh, uh, little screws loose they're 13 millimeter wrench is what I what it requires and uh, I set a bucket under there to catch any hydraulic oil that might uh, that might come out I do not have a gasket for this uh, I never thought to even check to see if I needed one so uh, let's see what it looks like when I pull it loose all right so I pulled that cap loose and the cap just comes off and it looks like this thing right here it's got a rubber gasket on it and then here's the screen that's up inside and uh, so I pulled this screen loose and what I'm seeing is just a just a touch of debris down here on the end I'm not sure what it is uh, I can see one little shiny piece but uh, you know the good news is the this filter is not plugged with uh, metal shavings which which happens so let me clean this up and I'll put it all back together so I got this thing cleaned up and uh, one thing to notice maybe you can see it is there's a little lip on the inside of this and there's no lip on the inside of of that and I think I've got it right that where the little recess is right there uh, it goes on this side we'll see all right so I got the thing uh, stuck in there and there's a, uh, a a place on the inside that receives it and now I'm gonna put the uh, put the cap on well I tried that little uh, filter screen uh, going in one direction and the, and the other with the recess uh, on the inside that I showed earlier uh, to this side and to the inside I took pictures with my cell phone camera and I can't tell that it makes any difference so uh, from what I can tell the debris was on the other end which is how I took it out so I've got the the recessed uh, kind of counterboard end on on to the outside I don't know if that's right or wrong but uh, yeah, somebody can tell me in the comments if you know I'm not sure it makes a difference not to bore you to death but uh, uh, just to triple check I went back to the internet and manuals and looked and looked and looked and basically all John Deere says is that little filter down there that little screen that goes in there there's, there's a hole inside uh, not this hole but there's a hole inside that it fits up in and that's all they say to do so uh, either end will fit in it and I measured how much it stuck out this way past the, the edge of the casting and they're the same so 
again if somebody in the comments knows uh, anything better I'd like to know but I couldn't find anything and if, if, surely if it was important uh, John Deere would have mentioned it in their manuals I guess so I got this piece cleaned up and then I got these screws and I put a little anti-seize on them uh, hopefully they won't uh, back out on me unbeknownst to me and uh, so I think this uh, rubber gasket's okay to reuse and we'll try this again we'll try to put this on and uh, button it up and start filling up with hydraulic oil alright so the little plates back on and I just need to snug these bolts down and uh, don't want to King Kong that and uh, as I mentioned we'll be done and ready to put hydraulic oil in the uh, tractor so where you put the hydraulic oil on this tractor is right back here in this tube and I need to clean it off and it's just got a little button here that tightens up and loosens and then uh, you check the level down here there's two glass uh, full and add so you want it to kind of be in between these two so I wiped this off as best I could and this little knob wouldn't budge so prayerfully I took a pair of channel locks and I just barely barely turned it in hopes of not breaking anything but now it's turning okay now and uh, so you take that loose and then at some point that cap pulls off so let me work with that just there just a little bit all right so I got it off and uh, basically it's just a stack of rubber washers that when you tighten this uh, piece right here down it pulls against that plate and swells it out to the edge of that. The thing of it is, on the underside, you know, it's a little bit of rust and uh, debris, so I'll need to clean that up before I put it back on there. But that's where I'm going to put the hydraulic fluid in. Now, to put the hydraulic fluid in, I've got a filter here uh, that I've cleaned up. It's got a kind of a long spout. Uh, it's kind of thin down there on the end, so hopefully the stuff will pour in there okay, and I won't be here till midnight trying to get it all down. But uh, let me uh, get my hydraulic oil, and uh, I'll come back. On this on this John Deere tractor, uh, just like with my oil changes, you know I use uh, John Deere oil and John Deere filters, and and it's not because it's a John Deere tractor, but uh, it's uh, I bought this tractor new, and uh, I know on the engine oil I've got another video where I talk about uh, you know engines, John Deere engines going 10,000 hours on John Deere oil and filters. But uh, I just uh, for this tractor, uh, in many ways, this is the backbone of this farm, in spite of my other tractors, and. Uh, I just want to kind of uh, keep it uh, in good shape. Uh, like I say, I bought it new. And uh, so I buy the John Deere uh, High Guard uh, transmission oil. I could have got this in five gallon buckets, but I knew I'd be lifting it up to here. So uh, uh, what I did is I bought two and a half gallon uh, jugs to make it just a little easier to handle. Cost me a little more, but uh, uh, you know, I'm no uh, King Kong, so uh, the lighter jug uh, will help me. One thing I did, one thing I did is I lowered the, the top link out of the way, so I could kind of have some clear access to this. And what I want to do, or what I feel what you need to do, is you need to put in as much oil as came out of it, and to see where your oil level is after you start and run the tractor for a little bit because uh, your filter is going to take up some oil and uh, so let me start filling this thing up so this is actually going pretty fast I was afraid you know sometimes when you put hydraulic oil into a uh, transmission it can get there can be an airlock 
and I was afraid this might take like two hours to get the get the uh, get the oil down into the transmission. And I have another uh, garden tractor. It's a it has an Eaton transmission on it. And the secret to getting uh, oil to go down the hole is to crack the filter on the uh, transmission so air can escape. But uh, seems to be doing pretty good, going pretty quick. All right, you can see now as I'm filling, the level in this glass is coming up. So I want to take it up to where it's just right at the edge of the full and uh, maybe halfway across that glass. All right, I got the uh, camera set up where I, you can see both uh, glasses at the same time. And I'm going to put a little more uh, hydraulic oil in and see where it goes. It goes up as the oil drains down into the sump. But it hadn't come up. It's right on the edge of the full mark, uh, right there. And uh, I'll add a little bit more to it. I think probably uh, what I'm ready to do now is uh, start the tractor and let it fill up the uh, fill up the filter and run through the system. I'm now ready to start the tractor and uh, uh, see what I got. What I'm what I'm trying to do is to get the the hydraulic oil up into that filter and through the system, and then I'll check the level back there on the sight glass again. I'll be adding some more uh, hydraulic fluid, I'm sure. <laughs> So I got, uh, I've got uh, hydraulic fluid flowing. My steering is uh, turning with ease. That's one of the ways you, you kind of get the, you know, you get the air out of the system, I guess. See so what happens on the three-point hitch. Oh yeah, it's coming up too. I'm gonna let it back down. And I'm gonna let this thing. Uh, I'm gonna let this thing sit for a few minutes. Well, let me check the sight glass now. Uh, it's down to about right here. So before it was up here, and it might come up a little bit, but uh, I'll let it set some. But I'll go ahead and add some uh, add some more fluid to it. But uh, we're getting near the end on this uh, hydraulic fluid change. I added a little more hydraulic fluid, and I'm, uh, the line is right there. You can see it. And uh, so I feel like I'm pretty close. I'm going to run it a little bit and uh, check it again, and then we'll kind of wind down this video. I'll also be checking for leaks uh, around the filter and the plug and that plate on the side. All right, so, uh, so I checked it over while it was running, and uh, I think everything's okay. The, uh, the level is right here, and uh, I'm going to run it and see what I got. Uh, one thing about this little plug right here, uh, one thing I did is I coated the surface here with plenty of oil, and it's ready to just uh, screw down. And be tightened up and I'll need another hand to do that but uh, in any event that's uh, that's kind of the video the changing the hydraulic uh, fluid 
A pretty easy job. There's the old filter. Used a filter wrench uh, like this. Uh, pretty easy to get to on this tractor. You know, you can put your hands all over it. And uh, drain plug was easy to get to and get out. Uh, first time changing the filter, the uh, I thought it went okay. The uh, little screen on this side kind of threw me for a loop for a little bit, but uh, I think I'm okay on that. So that's a easy hydraulic oil change on the John Deere. 5055D. So we'll talk to you later.